Before the pandemic, I thought I was living my best life. I had a great apartment in New York City, had just gotten a promotion at work, I was traveling the world, and plenty of great friends and a loving family. But the truth is, I was deeply unhappy. I wasn't sad necessarily, life just felt sort of empty, meaningless. I didn't always feel this way. In fact, most of my life, I had a real enthusiasm for discovering the world around me. But around spring of 2019, I started to really struggle mentally. I remember I'd take the subway to work in the mornings and everything would be totally normal. Then seemingly spontaneously, my mind would start spiraling out of control. It would get to the point where it was so suffocating that I'd have to get off the train way before my actual stop, just so that I could breathe normally again. I remember there'd be days I'd be out hanging out with my friends, playing sports, cracking jokes, you know, having a great time. But then by night, I'd be alone in my apartment, staring at myself in my bathroom mirror, wondering if my life had any meaning. I would later learn that I was what's considered passively suicidal and that I wasn't actively trying to take my own life, but I was about ready to give up. It was crazy. And I know that some people watching this right now, like maybe, you know, an old classmate or an old coworker, even some of my close friends, they'll be shocked to hear this. And they might not even totally believe me. The truth is it was an indescribable sensation, knowing in my head that I had every reason to live, but feeling in my heart and body like I just didn't want to. And then the pandemic hit. And as we all know, the world went into lockdown. A few months later, along with 20 million other Americans, I was laid off from my job. And already feeling completely directionless, I really struggled to look for work. Instead, I found myself pondering the question, if I were to die tomorrow, what would I regret? It's an intense question, and it can be uncomfortable to think about. But COVID was a stark reminder for all of us that life as we know it can be turned upside down and even taken away from us at any moment. And countless studies have shown that when we're at the end of our life, we're far more likely to regret all the things that we didn't do, the things that we didn't try, over the things that we did. I was reminded of a TV show called The Buried Life, which followed four friends who set out on a mission to cross off 100 things from their bucket lists. It had inspired me to start a bucket list of my own. So I reached back into my digital archives, found that list that I had started when I was 19 years old, and reread the whole thing. Some of the goals were big and ambitious, while others were simple and honestly kind of dumb, but they all really meant something to me. And by rereading this list, I was reminded of all these different parts of my personality that I'd been neglecting because I was so focused on career, wealth, and lifestyle. And because of that, I wasn't truly happy. So I resolved to live a more purposeful life and dedicated the next year to deliberately pursuing those goals that had been collecting dust on my bucket list. When I first decided on this idea, I had a ton of doubt and even questioned my sanity a bit. But I talked to my then roommate and one of my best friends, Brett. And ultimately, I realized that with all the hopelessness and languish going on in the world, I just wanted to be able to look back on this chapter of my life and with a soft smile say, damn, what a year. And so on September 1st, 2020, I embarked on my mission to do 52 things off my bucket list in 52 weeks. At first, I started simple. Number one, make the list. Boom, off to a great start. But I knew that if I was gonna take this idea seriously, I needed to put some structure around it. So I decided to name it the What A Year Project, and I referred to my list as My Way. Now, when most folks think about a bucket list, they typically think of really epic adventures and travel, but we often forget about all of the other parts of life. And my list had a wide variety. So I began by just doing the things that I felt I could do relatively easily on my own, like a 72 hour digital detox, or completing a thousand piece puzzle, or paying for a stranger's meal, which was one of my daily good deeds for a month. A couple of months in, I built a website so that I could track my progress and I shared it with some of my close friends and family. And once I had this website built, I realized that I could commemorate the experiences a lot more vividly. So I started taking photos, recording audio, What's up, everybody? This is the What A Year podcast. Back in September, yeah, I wrote down a list of all the things I want to do. 
and I got a lot of videos too. As the year went on, I realized that one of the biggest indicators of successfully completing something on my list was if I had gotten at least one other person to help me out. And so I started recruiting more and more friends and eventually I decided to make it a requirement that for everything I tried to cross off of my way, I would invite at least one other person. Now let me welcome everybody to the wild, wild west A state that's untouchable like Elliot Ness The track hits your eardrum like a slug to your chest Like a vest for your Jimmy in the city of sex We in that sunshine state where the bomb ass him be The state where you never find a dance floor in So far, I've really only shared the highlights of my year But there was a lot of failure and a lot of rejection too This is an email from a reality TV competition series that I applied to it's one of seven that I got rejected from. This is a spreadsheet from the weekend in Las Vegas when my friends and I decided to try to turn $1,000 into $10,000 within 48 hours. And as you can see, there's a lot of red on there, which is not good for us. And this is an email I received from someone on Joseph Gordon-Levitt's team when I reached out and asked if I could take a selfie with him because apparently he's my doppelganger. At the end of the year, I didn't actually complete all 52 things on my list. I only got 32 which is like a D minus. But I realized that success wasn't really about crossing everything off of my bucket list. I reconnected with people that I hadn't seen in years who will now be lifelong friends. I had experiences that I would have never imagined, some that weren't even on my bucket list to begin with. And with the amazing community of folks that helped me out all throughout the project, I created stories and memories that'll last a lifetime. And in a year that I genuinely feared could break me mentally, I ultimately found that enthusiasm for life again. You know, I don't wanna deny how incredibly difficult this past year was and still is for many of us. And I recognize that I'm incredibly privileged and fortunate to have been able to have this experience. But I also want to convey that I think any of us can pull ourselves out of that darkness. And I learned five lessons in particular from this year that I'd just like to share in case they help anyone else in their pursuit of happiness too. One, confront mortality. We will all die someday. And once we reconcile with the reality of our own death, I think that it can be incredibly empowering. It simplifies things. And in my case, I thought a lot about the people and events in my life that had forced me to confront mortality. I thought about when my childhood friend, Bobby, passed away at the age of 12 from heart complications. I thought about my friend, Alex, took his own life at 25, even though he had so much going for him. And I thought about my mom, who just recently went into cardiac arrest after going in for surgery on her lower spine. Thankfully, she did make it. But all of these different thoughts and events culminated in the question that I asked myself, if I were to die tomorrow, what would I regret? Two, catalog your dreams. I didn't worry too much if my goal seemed too big, too shallow, too abstract, or even just kind of lame. If it mattered to me, I wrote it down. And I really tried to get to the core of why this was important to me. You know, what could happen if I actually do this thing? What will happen if I don't? My website was a great tool for me to further illustrate my purpose behind this goal by adding in pictures, videos, quotes, and journal entries. Three, recruit the power of community. Most people will love whatever it is that you're working on, but some people won't. Respectfully ignore the haters and lean on your supporters. I would share my list with just about anybody who would listen, and I probably annoyed a lot of people in the process. But through that, I found allies that supported me, mentors that could coach me, and I even found partners that wanted to join in. When you loop in other people, you hold yourself accountable, things get done a lot more efficiently, and you have just a hell of a lot more fun doing it. Four, set objective parameters. Once you catalog your dreams, you might find that some of them are open to subjective interpretation. As in, one person might say it's been completed while someone else would say, oh no, you're not done yet. 
So I went through an effort to try to make all of my goals smarter, where SMART is an acronym for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. In my case, not only did I have exactly 52 weeks to try to achieve 52 things, I also went through and made sure that each goal on my list had very clear yes or no completion requirements. And by doing this, it helped me understand if I was actually making tangible progress towards my goal or if I was just spinning my wheels. Five, celebrate failure. It's incredibly difficult to accomplish every single one of your goals on the first try. And quite frankly, I think if you do, you're not challenging yourself enough. So I learned to embrace failure and even celebrate it. Once you start to perceive your mistakes and rejection as just one step closer to eventual success, the whole thing becomes a lot more fun. And naturally, you'll learn to love the process, not just the end result. And that's really what this is all about anyway. So my hope in sharing my story is that it'll help others finally go after some of the things that they've been neglecting on their bucket lists too. I think too many of us wait, overanalyze, or just simply give up on the things that we've wanted to do in life. And I've experienced firsthand that if you just get started, share your aspirations with the community around you, and have the willingness to be a little bit vulnerable, you'll be amazed to see how the world responds. And so I would love to know, if you were to die tomorrow, what would you regret? Thank you.